The Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Act Two, Scene One. Court of Macbeth's Castle. Enter Banquo and Fleance bearing a torch before him. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take it. Tis later, sir. Hold. Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. Their candles are all out. Take thee that, too. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers, restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Enter Macbeth and a servant with a torch. Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been in unusual pleasure, and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond he greets your wife withal, by the name of most kind hostess, and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect. What else should free have wrought? All's well. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honour for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counselled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir, the like to you. Exeunt Banquo and Fleance. Go bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Exit, servant. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now o'er the one half-world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace. With Tarquin's ravishing strides, towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear the very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time, which now suits with it. Whiles I threat, he lives, words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. A bell rings. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Exit. Act two, scene two, the same. Enter Lady Macbeth. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark, peace! It was the owl which shrieked, the fatal bellman which gives the sterns good night. He is about it. The doors are open, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets, that death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. Within. Who's there? What ho? Alack, I am afraid they have awaked, and tis not done the attempt and not the deed confounds us hark i laid their daggers ready he could not miss em had he not resembled my father as he slept i had done it 
Enter Macbeth. My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Donalbane. This is a sorry sight. Looking on his hands. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in his sleep, and one cried, Murder! That they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. But they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and Amen, the other. As they had seen me with these hangman's hands, listening their fear, I could not say Amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce Amen? I had most need of blessing, and Amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more! Macbeth does murder sleep! The innocent sleep! Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, The death of each day's life, sore labor's bath, Balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, Chief nourisher in life's feast! What do you mean? Still it cried, Sleep no more, to all the house! Gloms hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cotter shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Oh, my worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain-sickly of things. Go, get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are as but pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Exit. Knocking within. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? Ha! Ah, they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas in incarnadine, making the green one red. Re-enter Lady Macbeth. My hands are of your colour. But I shame to wear a heart so white. Knocking within. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it, then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Knocking within. Hark, more knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, twere best not know myself. Knocking within. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. Exeunt. Act Two, Scene Three. The same. Knocking within. Enter a porter. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Elgate, he should have old turning the key. Knocking within. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Have napkins to know about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Knocking within. Knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name faith he is an equivocator that could swear in both the scales against either scale who committed treason enough for god's sake yet could not equivocate to heaven oh come in equivocator knocking within 
Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor. Come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knocking within. Knock, knock, never a quiet. What are you? <sighs> but this place is too cold for hell. I'll devil porter it no further. I had thought to have let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Knocking within. Anon, anon, I pray you remember the porter. Opens the gate. Enter Macduff and Lennox. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock, and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him and it mars him. It sets him on and it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him, makes him stand to, huh? and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep, and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir, it, in the very throat on me. But I requited him for his life, and I think, being too strong for him, though he took up my legs sometimes, yet I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Enter Macbeth. Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Exit. Goes the king hence today. He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly where we lay. Our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings hear I, the air strange screams of death, and prophesying with accent terrible of dire compunction and confused events, new hashed to the awful time. The obscure bird clamored the live-long night. Some say the earth was favorous and did shake. T'was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Re-enter Macduff. Oh! Horror, horror, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke ope the Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. What is it you say? The life? Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. And do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Exeunt Macbeth and Lennox. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donalbane! Malcolm, awake! Shake off this drowsy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself! Up, up, and see the great doom's image! Malcolm! Banquo! As from your graves rise up, and walk like sprites to countenance this horror! Ring the bell! Bell rings. Enter Lady Macbeth. What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak! Speak! O oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Enter Banquo. O oh, Banquo! Banquo! A royal master's murdered! Woe! Alas! What in our house? too cruel anywhere dear duff i prithee contradict thyself and say it is not so re-enter macbeth and lennox with ross had i but died an hour before this chance i had lived a blessed time 
for from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere lees is left this vault to brag of. Enter Malcolm and Donalbane. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were embashed with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped, we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, tempered, and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition my violent love outrun the pauser, reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers, steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make love known? Help me hence, ho! Oh. Look to the lady. Aside to Donalbane. Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? Aside to Malcolm. What should be spoken here, where our fate hid in an auger hole may rush and seize us? Let's away. Our tears are not yet brewed. Aside to Donalbane. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. Lady Macbeth is carried out. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer an exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So, so all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness, and meet in the hall together. Well contented. Exeunt, all but Malcolm and Donalbane. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland, I. Our separated fortunes shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there is daggers in men's smiles. The near in blood, the nearer bloody. This murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim, therefore to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave-taking, but shift away. There's warrant in that theft which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Exeunt Act Two, Scene Four Outside Macbeth's Castle Enter Ross and an old man. Three score and ten I can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens as troubled with man's act threaten his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the travelling lamp. Is night's predominance, or the day's shame, that darkness doth the face of earth entomb, when living light should kiss it? Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon. Here comes the good Macduff. Enter Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, you see you not? Is known who did this more than bloody deed. Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned, 
Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Gainst nature still, thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named, and gone to scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Comakill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors, and guardian of their bones. Will you to scone? No, cousin, I'll to fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's benison go with ye, and with those that would make good of bad, and friends of foes. Exeunt. End of Act Two of the Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare.